and welcome to one of the seminars of a group of virtual seminars that the East Sussex Careers Hub have created in June 2020. So my name is Henrietta Still, I'm an Enterprise Coordinator within the East Sussex Careers Hub team at East Sussex County Council and I'm joined by three of my colleagues today, Matthew Brill, Ruth Francis and Wendy Gorham and you'll see them on the bottom, their lovely faces and hopefully my lovely face as well and you're going to spend the next 30 minutes with me today looking at at one of our seminars, which is around a lesson plan for Key Stage 5 students. So as we go through this next seminar, you may want to think about other seminars that are within this series and you can find those on YouTube. So what are we going to be doing in this seminar today? So this seminar is all about an introduction to a lesson plan for Key Stage 5 students, which is focused on career pathways looking beyond COVID. So all of this sits under the umbrella of LMI, which means Labour Market Information, and all of our virtual seminars this month are about LMI. So over the next half an hour, I'm going to take you through an overview of a lesson plan which can be adapted to suit the needs of your students and your subject. Um, and hopefully during the next 30 minutes, you'll think about how I'm using an online platform today, Microsoft Teams, and I'm going to bring in some interactivity. You may have access to this and you may not. You may have access to other online platforms, which there are plenty. And we've put together a list of some of those opportunities and options for you at the end of a lesson plan that you will receive for this uh, seminar. Um, but it might try to start to inspire you to think about how you're going to bring in blended learning to your classroom from September 2020. After this seminar, you will be um, provided with all materials that can be edited. So you'll receive a lesson plan, a student worksheet and a PowerPoint that you can edit and change and make sure that it's relevant to your learners. So as I mentioned, this is for key stage five learners, um, generally level one to level three. However, you can bring things out, put things in and adapt it to the needs of your learners. So who can deliver this lesson plan? Well, a multiple um, stakeholders, so careers leads in schools, subject leads in schools, or if we're looking at post 16, FE providers, tutors, classroom teachers, etc. So please think throughout, how can I make this work for my vocational or technical area? Why is it important as a teacher to be thinking about how LMI and career pathways is not only important to my students, but also to me as a teacher and how I want to be shaping the curriculum moving forward? So these are just some screenshots of the worksheet and the lesson plan that you will receive. Uh, the top three pages are, are the first three pages from the student worksheet um, and the bottom three are the first three pages from the lesson plan. What I'm going to go through with you today is the power, power, PowerPoint that's been created for this lesson plan. So you may have the worksheet with you to follow along and you may not, but I'll be talking through the activities that you could be sharing or running with your students and you can see that with the worksheet there are lots of elements for students to complete as they go through the lesson fill in words group activity independent tasks as well so this lesson is designed to be delivered in person in a classroom however uh, using Microsoft Teams today, I'm going to show you how potentially you may want to deliver this lesson online if we're in that situation moving forward. So without further ado, we're going to start going through the PowerPoint and the lesson plan on looking beyond COVID, the career pathways for young people um, in Key Stage 5. So we're going to be taking a deep dive on what labour market information means and why we may want to learn more about the skills and jobs of the future. This lesson can be delivered in 45 minutes or an, or an hour and a half, depending on how much you want to stretch and challenge your students or the level at which you're pitching this. So what are the lesson outcomes of this session? To be able to describe the meaning of labour market information and explain its importance in thinking about future career pathways, exploring key skills and qualities employers will be looking for in their future employees. This is particularly important thinking about 
all of the stresses of the last couple of months during lockdown and what your students may have been challenging or thinking over the summer break. So this is a particularly good lesson to deliver in your first term back September, October, straight away in your curriculum to really get a feel of um, where your students are at and what their knowledge is um, to help shape their future really. Um, outline and understand what the key sectors are to the economy of East Sussex and discuss potential challenges that key sectors may face. So with most lessons, we'll start with a little icebreaker or gathering of information. And this is where you will do that in the lesson plan. So I would ask the group of students what comes to mind when they think of labour market information. So actually, I've got my three lovely colleagues that are going to do a little trial of how this may appear for yourselves. So we're going to use a tool on Microsoft Teams, which is called the whiteboard. So if my colleagues can just unmute themselves. Oops. OK, can the group see the whiteboard? Ruth, can you see the whiteboard here? I can, thank you. Fabulous. Oh, someone's got their phone on in lesson time. <laughs> um, Wendy, LMI. I explained that LMI means labour market information. What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say labour market information? Uh, jobs. Brilliant, jobs. Matt, why do you um, think jobs is why do you think labour market information is about jobs? Do you think it's showing the uh, availability of vacancies and the employment sectors that those jobs are uh, filled across? Yeah, brilliant words. Employment sectors. We're going to be coming on to that later in the session. Fabulous. Ruth, when I said LMI, did anything else come to mind? We've got jobs, vacancies. What else do you think it might mean? Uh, yeah, like um, it could be um, different trends that are happening. Um, so some sectors or industries could be really growing. Others could be declining. So they might have more jobs or fewer jobs. An increase in jobs or a decrease. Yeah, fabulous. Well done. And Wendy, why do you think we're looking at labour market information today in business studies? Because the world is a bit different at the moment because of the COVID pandemic. So we need to know what's changed out there because I know that like the NHS, they've had loads of people doing jobs. Great, that's a really good start to what labour market information is and we're going to unpack that now by watching a little video. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. Fab. So as you all can see, that is an example of how we can make something a little bit more interactive if we are delivering this online. Another great thing that you can do on uh, with blended learning and online is embedding videos into your presentations. So I won't go through this whole video, but this is an example of a video that you'll be showing in the lesson plan if you're delivering it to your students. Um, and it outlines how LMI is information used to support career transitions. So you've had your brainstorm with your students, you'll unpack that a little bit more, um, and then you'll show them this present, this video. My name is Graham Atwell. In this short movie, I'm going to Can look at the data. Can we all hear that, colleagues? 
facts about labour markets. Well, firstly, we can find out about general employment trends, unemployment rates, skills gaps, future demand. And we can also look at the structure of the labour market, what jobs exist, how many, in which sectors, which sectors are growing, which sectors are declining. We can also look at how the labour market functions, how people get into jobs and how they move between employers. And national, regional and local labour market variations. What's the size of the workforce? What's prominent se sectors in a particular city or region? And of course, we can focus on equality and diversity. Which individuals are employed in different sectors? At what levels? How much pay do they get on weekly average, part-time, full-time, monthly? And we can find out about... Brilliant. So you get the gist of how you can embed in a video and how that video perfectly outlines hopefully what those students would have brainstormed already and we used the whiteboard to do that. You will then move on to using your students' worksheets. So your students will have this um, paragraph in their worksheet and they will fill in the gaps, those elements that are bold, they'll fill in the gaps of what words they think match there and then you can show them this uh, slide with the answers. So we're summing up what labour market information means and I know from talking to colleagues and staff in secondary schools and further education, often LMI is quite an obscure term so you can definitely use this paragraph when we're speaking to parents and thinking about progression, where are we moving to, why LMI is so important. So we've started the lesson looking at um, our outlines, what LMI means, and we're going to move on to the second outcome in the lesson, which is thinking about the top skills for labour market. So at this point of the lesson, I'll ask the group or individuals, if you're running it online, to think of the top three skills that employers may ask for from potential employees. And at this stage, you may want to refresh and reiterate the difference between skills and qualities. Um, and then you will get your students to feedback and explain that these might be outlined in a job description or when you show when you go for an interview. So let's call out a few skills and qualities. Um, Wendy, what do you think is the top skill that an employer may ask for when you go for a job? That you can communicate. Communication, great. Matt, have you got another one? Uh, problem solving. Brilliant, love it. Ruth? Digital skills. Great. So you, your students can unmute themselves on the online platform that you're using or you can mute them or you can use the chat element. You'll then explain during the lesson that these skills and qualities that employers look for may change now moving forward. So hopefully over the last couple of months we've developed some new skills and qualities and employers will be looking for different strengths in their future employees. And this is also where you can bring in external partners to support this lesson plan. So all of the secondary schools and FE providers, post-16 providers in East Sussex have access to and support from the Enterprise Advisor Network. So if you are unsure who the Enterprise Advisor is that supports your educational establishment, then please let us know. We can hopefully try and match you to a local employer that can come and support this lesson. So you may be teaching in sport, for example, and we could hopefully try and match you up with a manager of um, a local fitness club that might be thinking about new skills and qualities to support this lesson. You'll then show the group or a uh, this brain with some of these predicted skills for 2021. At this point in your lesson, you'll ask the students to choose one of these skills and qualities and write about how they've developed that over the last couple of months. 
They may want to add something that isn't there. And also you'll see that from, uh, you'll see communication is there, but problem solving isn't, for example. But we might want to match problem solving with critical thinking, which is a new way of thinking about those old skills and rehashing them. All of those skills are transferable to many different workplaces. And that is hopefully the whole sense that you want to give your students, that they should keep themselves open to adapting to new situations that we find ourselves in. Brilliant, so you'll be using the student worksheet and your PowerPoint. Um, we'll then move on to what the key sectors are that impact on the economy of East Sussex. So here you've got six sectors within East Sussex that as a careers hub and Skills East Sussex, we look very closely at how we can support these sectors as these are where the majority of our vacancies are. And of course, as a key component of LMI, we want to ensure that we're, we're gearing our young people up for the right pathways that exist locally. So at this point in your lesson, you're going to ask the students what they think a sector is. You could use your whiteboard, you could just ask for feedback, um, and then you'd share these key sectors. Now, of course, as I, if we look at LMI, the figures show us that many of the job uh, vacancies um, sit in these sectors, and you may want to distinguish each of these sectors. So, for example, many of the courses that are delivered at Plumpton College that students will know of are land based, such as animal management or arboriculture, tree surgery. So you might want to unpack that a little bit. Also in the lesson plan, this is where we're going to have a little bit of a game with our students. So the quick game, either in pairs or on their own, and you might want to think about which subject you're delivering this in. Um, for example, if you're delivering this in health and social care, then you probably want to focus on the health and social care sector. So in your game, in this game, in pairs or individually, you're going to ask students to think of the top three jobs for that sector. And they want to try and think of jobs that nobody else has thought of. And then they get three points if nobody else has uh, come up with that job and one point if somebody else has. So it's a little bit of a game. Um, they'll spend five minutes thinking of job titles and then feeding back. So for example, with construction, you've got quantity surveyor, project manager, carpenter, engineering, mechanical engineer, processing engineer, and many more. So let's give that a little go with our group. So Ruth, Matt and Wendy, I'm going to give you one minute on the clock. I know this says five minutes, but I'm going to give you one minute. Hopefully you can do it before then to think of the top three jobs in health and social care. So we're looking for job titles in health and social care. And you want to try and think of job titles that nobody else has come up with. OK, off you go. How are you doing, Wendy? Have you got your three? Yeah, near enough, I think. OK, Matt, have you got your three? If you've got your three, hold them up to the screen so I can see that you've written three. <laughs> and you know it's a fair game. Brilliant. OK, Ruth, what do you have? I have podiatrist, clinical psychologist and paediatrician. OK, did anybody else have any of those? No. OK, so how many points did you get, Ruth? That's oh, three nine. each. I'm very nine. Well done. Um, can you explain what a podiatrist is to those that may not know? So it's um, foot care. Great. Foot doctor. Yes. OK, R Wendy, what have you come up with? I've got an operating theatre assistant. Yes. I've got an occupational therapist. And I've got a dental technician. Great. OK, and then we'll just go on. Matt would then share his um, and then you might want to unpack that a little bit more. Again, this is just an example of how you can make this lesson interactive online. Thank you, my wonderful colleagues. OK. 
you'll then next go on to the latter part of this lesson, which is all about challenges. So we've looked at what LMI means. We've looked at what our str strengths are within ourselves, our skills and qualities, and how that might change moving forward post COVID-19. And we also now at this part of our lesson are going to put ourselves in the, the shoes literally of employers moving forward. So if we are an employer, we're going to be thinking about the challenges that some of those sectors are going to face. Um, and as employers, we need to look at innovative ways at attracting talent, growing their business and ensuring that we can survive as employers with the changing landscape. So this is really important for young people to think about because they're moving into these sectors. And so they may need to change some of their tact in terms of what they're learning or what they think their strengths are with the challenges that sectors at large may face. So, for example, one of the challenges is automation. 58% of jobs in hospitality may be at risk of automation. This is due to the fourth industrial revolution, a lot of jobs being replaced by AI. So again, you might want to have a conversation about what automation uh, means. And you might also want to ask students to read that out if you are doing this online. At this point in the lesson, you'll ask the group to split into pairs or work individually if they're working re remotely. And you'll allocate a challenge per student. Or again, if you're using this in your curriculum time, thinking about your core teaching, what subject are you teaching? You might want to choose one challenge out of the five that relate particularly to your sector. So for example, your aging workforce as a challenge. If you're teaching um, hospitality or uh, in tourism, you may want to use this challenge. So students, either in groups or individually, will look at one of these challenges and pretend that they are an employer and what solution they may come up with as this challenge comes to light moving forward. So you have Brexit, staff turnover, working from home, gender balance. Gender balance is a great one to look at if you are um, teaching a subject within construction or motor vehicles, for example. Great, so you'll see that again, this is a really interactive part of the lesson because the students will be sharing, um, but also noting down all of their information within their worksheet. Then the lesson will come to a close and of course you've got your plenary to really try and tease out some of that learning from your students. Um, did anything surprise you? Hopefully there was new information there for students um, and potentially they might have changed some of their thoughts about uh, whether they wanted to own a business or what that business was going to be. Maybe something might have sparked something within them looking at those challenges and how they could be a potential future employer um, challenging some of those. As I mentioned earlier, you may want to bring in employers to further strengthen this lesson, um, but there are also areas here for further exploration. There are videos on Learn Live, the WOW show that are sector specific that you may want to embed within this lesson as well. Um, there's also LMI for All, which is an online widget where you can look at jobs, the salaries and the skills that are needed within there. And you can also find further information on our Careers East Sussex website. So that was a real short introduction to the lesson plan that you could deliver to your key stage five students um, and how you can potentially tweak it using blended learning um, and some ideas for yourselves of how you can um, make that subject specific. 
And of course, if you want any further information, then please email us or visit the Careers East Sussex website. And do remember that this is one of a few virtual seminars. So if you enjoyed this virtual seminar, let us know. Uh, let us know what else you'd like to see moving forward. And um, we really would love to know if this lesson works with your students and the feedback on that. So good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.